This band is known for combining elements of rock, folk, country, jazz, bluegrass, blues, rock and roll, gospel, reggae, and world music. Okay, so is this one rock? Hi everyone! I am back to the rock world and today I am diving into another band that I have never listened to before and that is the Grateful Dead. Um, so I really don't know a lot. I know many of you have mentioned this on my channel and here's what I've learned about it so far. Um, it was an American band and formed in 1965 in California. And it has been recorded that Bob Weir, who was the founder of this band, said the Beatles were why we turned from a jug band into a rock and roll band. He said what we saw them doing was impossibly attractive. I couldn't think of anything else more worth doing. So I am in the middle of my Beatles 150 series and getting to understand how influential they were and a bit more about their music and their journey. And now here I am listening to a band which started out differently and then decided they wanted to be like the Beatles. And well, I'm curious to see how this particular song, Eyes of the World, sounds. So let's dive in. Right away, I heard some blues influences in the, the flexible pitches, and then we have this very laid back beat underneath, a little bit swung perhaps. Um, it's very gentle, and then the voice comes in. You know, I find these names of these bands really kind of curious because I never know what kind of sound to expect based on their name. The Grateful Dead, I'm thinking, okay, um, if I were just picking that name out of a basket and then randomly guessing what style of music that would be, I'd probably guess something more along the lines of something aggressive. Uh, but here I'm hearing this very flexible, fluid, um, easygoing type of music. It's always a surprise to me when I try out a new band and I don't know what's coming. And then to see, did my, did my impressions of the name have anything to do with the sound coming out of them? Well, we're near the beginning, so let's just start back at the beginning. line caught my attention. The heart has its beaches, its homeland and thoughts of its own. This is such an interesting, 
I guess, picturesque description of what we have inside of us a lot of the time. I am, what Vlad told me at the beginning, all the different styles that this band is associated with, I'm hearing so many different influences in this music, but I don't really want to pull it apart and say there's this influence here and that influence there. I feel like, I feel like what they're doing here is very unified. It doesn't feel like they just scrambled to see how much they could put into something. It seems like, it feels like what they've created is very natural and comfortable in its own right. And I appreciate that. It's, it has a lot of appeal to it in that regard. So much, it feels a bit like, mm, I guess I could come up with a couple different images. It feels like a warm, friendly hug, you know, just, just somebody coming, giving you a warm hug, or perhaps an easy, relaxed day on the beach, laying on your beach towel and just, just enjoying the sounds of the surf and the and the breeze, nothing, nothing really, really uh, deeply emotionally intense. It's more, it's more a kind of warm embrace quality and, and the, the eyes of the world, like you're just observing and taking it all in and noticing you are the eyes of the world. It's such an interesting concept. You're the eyes of the world. Well, of course, if you don't see this beauty, who does? And at the same time, it's not... Well, okay, I'm also thinking of how, how this might be influenced by the Beatles. Because, obviously, I learned that was a, one of the things that really shaped this band's direction. And compared to the early Beatles, this is much more easygoing. I haven't gotten far into the Beatles yet, so I, I haven't... Well, okay, I listened to Strawberry Fields Forever, and She's Leaving Home. Those are definitely down the road a bit. But here, compared to where I've been with the early Beatles recently, this feels like the sound quality, the tonal palette, we could say is more polished, more sophisticated. It doesn't have that raw brightness to it, the sort of cutting tone. But 
this melody is so lovely. It, it's like, it's like the waves coming and going off of the sand on the beach. It, it ebbs and it flows and it rises and falls and, and, or maybe like, maybe like the grass along the sand dunes just swaying in the breeze. It has this very gentle swaying quality. Really beautiful. to make sense of these lyrics and and take in all that's being presented here and I'm trying to just decide how to describe them they're not as I said intensely digging out the deep emotions of the heart they're also not seriously introspective neither are they just out party and have fun or or call your girlfriend. They, they have this sort of, I guess that what comes to mind is a very unassuming little word and, and that is comfortable. It feels very comfortable, like comfortable with the state of things, comfortable with where we are and our place in the world, comfortable with the fact that we have seasons, we have, we have, well, the heart has seasons and thoughts of its own. We go through hard times, we go through all sorts of different um, turmoils and dramas and, and, and barren times and happy times. And we're just comfortable with the fact that that is the way, that is the cycle of life. There are seasons, they come and they go. And there's this beautiful appreciation of who we are here. You are the eyes of the world and and you are you are the song. You are the the song that the morning brings. It's unassuming in the way it presents it, but it's very, very special in its gentle, unassuming dress. up on a gentle, comfortable day and stepping out your door and meeting with a friend who just makes you feel at ease and makes you feel appreciated and special without making a big dramatic thing about it.
I guess this fade out is rather appropriate too because you don't feel like this comes to an end. It's just, it's how we are and it's how things are going to be. Very special little tune. That was a lovely little piece of music and the melody especially caught my ear and I really enjoyed it. It's a it has so much to offer and as I said there's so many different influences in this musical influences everything from I'm thinking it reminds me a bit of Louis Armstrong's what a wonderful world or the way the melody just carries on and ebbs and flows has some qualities that make me think of Abba's Happy New Year and there are other things that are coming to mind as I'm sitting here. So I, in my in-depth, I guess I will focus on that a bit and we'll explore the melody and, and see what it is that is so, so melodic about it. Keep your eyes open for the in-depth. It will come maybe in a little while, but it's, it's going to be in the works. Before going to today's question, let me just remind you that if you enjoy this video, then it would help me a lot if you would like and subscribe. Um, I'm kind of excited about the potential of maybe hitting 100,000 before one year is up. That would be amazing. And if you want to do more to support my journey, you can always check out my Coffee and Patreon pages and um, have access to all kinds of courses and other benefits which are continually developing there as well. Now, today's question comes from Big Henry and he asks, has your exploration into rock music surprised you and what songs, bands and artists have impressed you or that you have actually liked? Well, that's kind of a big question. Yes, I've had a lot of surprises. And I have found songs and bands and artists that I've been impressed with, that I actually like. I have this growing list of them which I want to return to and explore more and um, put some more time and effort into getting to know them better. I still feel like I have so much to cover and I'm limited on my time. So I haven't done as much of that as I would like, but that is one of my plans is to go live with some of these bands that I've come across and been introduced to and really appeal to me. As examples, well, there's um, uh, Deep Purple's Child in Time and that one really grabbed me. I have listened to one of mo their movements from, the, from their concerto for group and orchestra but I would like to go back and listen to more of their works. Then of course there's um, Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody and I am so eager to explore his voice and his music more. Currently I'm working on of course the Pink Floyd project and getting to know Beatles better so I'm working my way through and I will continue to do so. The next question comes from Recharge and Relax and says, Hi Amy, these will be more general questions. As a lifelong fan of rock music, I have been under the impression, I admit that this could be a misguided impression, that those who are classically trained have a tendency to look down on rock music as less than. So here goes. One, what were your preconceived ideas about rock music before you started analyzing it? Well, if you go back and listen to my first introductory video, which is still up on my channel, uh, I put up there uh, in August of last year, you'll hear me mention that I had always had the impression that rock music was kind of like factory noises. And I think a lot of you were quite horrified by that description. There we go. Two. Within your peer group, did you find there was an attitude of rock music being somehow below classical music, if the subject even came up at all? 
That's a tricky one to answer. In fact, I know some very fine, world-renowned classical musicians who have also had careers that, that were connected to rock music. I know a harpist who recorded a lot at Abbey Road and had a lot to do with a lot of interactions with the Beatles and other musicians who, who recorded there. I know another harpist who has, well, I mentioned her recently, Eleanor Bennett. She also has been at some point quite significantly involved in rock music and performing even rock music. So I wouldn't say that classical music musicians as a whole look down on rock music as less than. And it's also important to remember that classical music historically has drawn inspiration from all types of music, different, different um, national styles, different folk styles, different traditions around the world. Classical composers have drawn all of that in. And I know that that has been an influence, that rock music has been an influence in classical music as well. All we have to do is look at Look at the King's Singers, which was my one exposure to a few Beatles songs not sung by the Beatles. For example, Blackbird, sung by the King's Singers. And those are all trained classical singers. And yet they are doing what you would call covers of this music. Third question, how have your thoughts about rock music changed? For example, is it more varied than you may have initially expected? Yes, it is far more varied than I expected, and I have found so much more color and musical content than I realized existed there. For I get the impression that you would not have denigrated any type of music in the past, but would you be more likely to actually defend rock music to your peers now, again, if the subject were to come up at all? I guess I don't feel a need to defend any kind of music, even classical music. I am passionate about classical music. It is what I love and I, I, you know, it's, it's something that is just incredible to me. I don't feel a need to defend it. I, if somebody doesn't like it or thinks that it's not worth listening to, my response is to say, well, that's fine, everyone has their own likes and dislikes. I think there is something there that would be meaningful to you if you were able to get into it. And one of the things I'm doing on my Patreon and Coffee pages in the near future is to do a series of videos about what is in classical music and how do we get into it if we're unfamiliar or if it's not our favorite style. So, my attitude has, my knowledge of it, of course, has grown. And so my understanding of it has changed. Um, no, I wouldn't denigrate any particular style. Although, as you all know, I can be quite opinionated in what I like and don't like and whether I think it's really any sort of substantive music. That's different from completely dismissing an entire genre or style. So those are today's questions. Um, there will be more on the next video. Keep your eyes and ears open for it. And I'll see you next time.